All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. Uh, the name of the video is Five Theories About What Lies Outside of the Observable Universe. Let's check it out. About 13.75 billion years ago, our universe as we know it today was created. Shortly thereafter, the primordial light began to shoot through the cosmos and spread throughout the entire early universe. At this time, the universe itself also expanded. Looks like the, uh, the horse had nebula. However, the inflation of the universe slowed down after the first initial eruption. Mm -hmm. But since then, the rate of expansion has been steadily increasing due to the influence of increasing dark energy. In essence, the cosmos has been growing at an ever-increasing rate since its creation. Physicists and mathematicians have been studying the nature of the universe for hundreds of years, trying to solve the mysteries it contains. But there are some scientists who go one step further into the unknown by thinking about what lies beyond the boundaries of our universe. Let's go, is guys. it possible that there is something else beyond the existence of our own universe? Absolutely. Other universes, worlds whose existences we can only guess at. That could well be the case. Here are five theories about what this something could be and what clues there are for the various theories. If you like our videos... Guys, like, are there... Is there potentially something outside of our universe? Come on, guys. Stop playing. <laughs> Of course there is. Absolutely. Um, would we ever know? Probably not. Not at our current rate of progress. No chance, guys. Please support us with a thumbs but up. Subscribe. I have no problem engaging in some theories. Simply space. And look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Let's go. But guys, give me some plausible ones, though. Please. Nothing fantastical. Hubble volume. The notion of outside the universe is very tricky because first the universe has to be defined more precisely. Right. A common formulation, which does more justice to the core of the matter, is the term the observable universe, whereby the speed of light plays a major role here. Since we can only see things when the light that they emit or reflect reaches us, we can never see further than the greatest distance that light can travel in the time that the universe has existed. Right, because honestly, guys, most likely the stars that we see in the sky are, are, are shells of what they once were. I think what we're seeing is probably the, the, uh, the explosion of said star. Cosmologists estimate the that the oldest photons we can observe have traveled a distance of 45 to 47 billion light years since the Big Bang. This means that the observable universe is about 93 billion light years large, plus or minus a few light years. These approximately 93 billion light years contain all the quarks, quasars, stars, planets, nebulae, black holes ever recorded by a telescope, and everything else that we might be able to observe but have not yet seen. But the observable universe contains only the light that has had time to reach us. Right. This also means that the observable universe is getting bigger and bigger. However, the universe is also finite. The limited amount is also called the Hubble volume, after the telescope that has given us the most distant views of the universe so far. We will never be able to see beyond this. Guys, James Webb is absolutely going to get us better images than the Hubble. Um, I mean, I get what he's saying here, but uh, James Webb is, is, is better. All right, let's get it's limit. <laughs> so it's basically the only universe with which we can ever interact. However, we know with a probability bordering on certainty that there is more universe beyond that limit. Astronomers believe that space, invisible to us, could also be infinite, with matter, energy, galaxies, etc., distributed pretty much exactly as in the observable universe. Beyond the Hubble volume, we will not only... I can almost guarantee that's probably exactly what it is. Um, like what we can't see, if we can get to the edge of what is uh, considered as observable, um, and then f we have new access to an entire new observable universe. I mean, yeah, guys, I think we're, um, I think for the most part, these are the rules. I mean, I'm sure things can be slightly different, right? But 
I think we look up into the sky, we see all these images, we see all the uh, the nebula that surround us, guys. I think mean, I think that is probably the rule, right? I mean, these aren't exceptions, I don't think, at least, guys. Um, so if that's a theory, I feel comfortable with this theory. We find more planets, but also other planets very similar to our Earth. If we go far enough, we will find another solar system with an Earth that is identical in every respect. Where you had cereal for breakfast this morning instead of eggs. And oh, on, another man. world where you skipped breakfast. And yet another world in which you got up in the morning and then robbed a bank. So like the parallel universe theory. Or the multiverse theory. Guys, oh, I don't know how I feel about this one here, guys. Um, I don't think that it's going to be an identical thing if we can get past the observable universe, guys. I think it's just going to be different. Uh, will there be planets that are similar to uh, to Earth? Will there be more Earth-like planets? Absolutely there will be. Because we've, we've seen a couple of them already, right? Uh, a good amount of the Keplers are, are potentially, potentially Earth-like, right? Um, so I don't know, guys. I mean, I don't think that it's just going to be another version of us once we get past the observable universe. He's kind of now getting into science fiction. In fact, cosmologists believe that if you go far enough beyond the boundaries of the universe, you will find another Hubble volume that is completely identical to ours. And in those other Hubble volumes, there is another version of you out there that reflects every possible action you might take. This may seem unlikely, but then again, the infinity of the universe is very hard to imagine right. because it's simply beyond human imagination. Right. I mean, we can't even imagine it. But if that was to be a thing, then we are absolutely living in um, what can be defined as a simulation. Everything around you is NPC for the most part. Right? You are living your own world, obviously, and in an existence. Uh, but you're being, for the most part, uh, controlled. You're part of the simulation, right? Um, I don't know, guys. I, I, I never really liked this very specific theory. Um, I get it. It's, it's a solid thought experiment, but it's too fantastical for me. To break this down, according to the theory of relativity, objects that are close together cannot move against each other faster than the speed of light. However... There is no such law for objects that are extremely far apart when the space between them expands. In short, it's not that objects move faster than the speed of light, but that the space between the objects expands, causing them to fly away from each other at amazing speeds. Ultimately, this means that we could only reach the edge of the observable universe if we developed a transport method that would allow us to either, one, travel faster than the speed of light, it would have to be much faster than the speed of light. Theory that most physicists believe to be impossible. Or two, transcend space-time by wormholes or warp propulsion, which most physicists also believe to be impossible. Dark flow. I mean, if we had the ability to kind of fold space in a way, that would make a lot more sense in, in terms of traveling than worrying about actually traveling like, uh, like FTL, like faster than light, guys. Guys, give, give me some type of folding space technology. I think that sounds better. In 2008, astronomers discovered something very strange that they had not expected. Okay. Galactic clusters were streaming in the same direction at immense speeds, over 2 million miles per hour. New observations in 2010 confirmed this phenomenon known as dark flow. Dark flow. Scientists discovered the phenomenon by studying some of the largest structures in the cosmos giant galaxy clusters. These clusters are collections of about a thousand galaxies and very hot gas that emits X-rays. By observing the interaction of X-rays with cosmic microwave radiation, or CMB, left over from the Big Bang, scientists can study the motion of clusters of galaxies. The X-rays scatter photons into the CMB and shift the temperature in an effect known as the sunyaev zeldovich kinetic effect. This effect had not been previously observed as a consequence of clusters of galaxies, but was first noticed by a research team led by Alexander Kashlinsky, an astrophysicist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, when it examined about 700 clusters that were up to 6 billion light years away, halfway across the universe. They compared these clusters with the map of the CMB taken by NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe 
WMAP, satellite. The motion of the clusters defies all predictions about the distribution of mass in the universe after the Big Bang. One possible cause, massive structures outside the Hubble volume that exert a gravitational influence. Scientists are almost certain that the source of the suction lies outside our known universe. This would mean that the structure of the infinite universe is not uniform beyond our point of view. As for the structures themselves, they could literally be anything from accumulations of matter and energy on almost unimaginable scales right. to bizarre fault lines that conduct gravitational forces from other universes. Infinity Bubbles Talking about things outside the Hubble volume may be misleading. Okay, this last one is also moderately plausible, but I still think the first theory was probably the best one. No, no, maybe the second one, because the I'm not really for, the again, the multiverse theory, but this last one was interesting. Because it is still the same universe, only part of it we cannot see. Yeah, I mean, we guys, I expect our universe to be much bigger than what we can actually see. That's a thing. The same physical laws and constants Imagine. apply. In another version... And that's why I think that it's not going to be... Um, like once we can get past what we can actually see and observe, um, I do think that it's still going to go on and on and on. I mean, because guys, we've already made the rule. If that makes any sense, I mean, we can kind of see how planets uh, uh, perform. We kind of know what to, for the most part, expect. And um, I think the universe is much bigger than we're actually uh, giving credit to it. Of the story, the expansion of the universe after the Big Bang led to the formation of bubbles in the structure of space. Each bubble stopped expanding together with the rest of space and formed its own universe with its own laws and physical constants. In this scenario, space is infinite, and each bubble for itself is also infinite, because a single infinity can contain an infinite number of infinities. Even if you could somehow break through the boundary of one bubble, the space between the bubbles would still expand, so you would never reach the next bubble. Right. No matter how fast you move. Right. Okay. Black holes. I like that one. A theory proposed by physicist Lee Smolin, known as the theory of fertile universes, states that every black hole in our universe causes the creation of a new universe. Each universe will have slightly different physical laws than the previous one. In this way, Smolin suggests a kind of natural selection for universes. Since laws and physical conditions that lead to the frequent formation of black holes are also the reason for the formation of other universes. While universes that do not form black holes become extinct. The theory has since been disproved by Smolin himself and others. Infinitely many parallel universes. What? <laughs> the last one, guys? I don't know. Um... Luckily, it's already been disproven, guys. But here's the thing: imagine a black hole like creating another universe, like a, in a sense, a portal to that very specific universe is through that black hole. Um, there are many black holes, guys. I, mean, I don't think that they're extremely rare, guys, in our in our universe. Um, that's yeah, that's a stretch, bro. That's a super stretch. I don't think that that's a that that. That there's one access port into a brand. Guys, that's weird. Let's go. There are innumerable theories about Could parallel be, I mean, universes, know, but, but the most valid wrong. theory today involves a further development of the ideas of the string theory. Okay. This involves so-called membranes that oscillate in other directions. It would go beyond the scope of this video to go into too much detail about string or membrane theory, right. but the core of the theory is that the rippling membranes beyond the worlds in the 11th dimension are completely different universes and when the ripples collide a new universe is formed the effects of the wave motion help to explain the observed distribution of matter in our universe i mean one of the strange is plausible what do we know i guess right but in just elements of the theory is the notion that all the gravity we experience in our universe actually enters this universe from another universe in another dimension which explains why gravity here appears so weak compared to the other fundamental forces. What do you think? Do other unknown worlds exist outside our universe? Absolutely. Does infinity exist? And if so, how infinite is it really? 
I mean, if we could measure it, then why would it be called infinity? Ooh, right. But um, do I think that the universe is infinite? I mean, we can have a thought experiment. Uh, yeah, I would say yes. I would say um, there's no ending. There's no wall to to hit because um, I think what we know is one thing. Then there's another thing, <laughs> right? And I definitely think that that thing is infinite. Um, how was it created? No idea. Guys, we could all be marbles in a, in a, in a fish tank, guys, um, for someone playing a game. If that makes any sense. We could all be that. We could all just be that. Um, seriously, guys. Um, but all right, listen, let me know in the comments the next subject we should be checking out, and I will get into that as soon as I possibly can, all right? And listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day, and enjoy your day thoroughly.